Welcome to World War II Online Tutorials, how to set up your controllers, which can include joystick, mouse, sliders, rudder pedals, and some adjustments you might want to make to those for World War II Online, the game. The best thing to do is to have all your peripherals connected before you start the game. So you're going to want to go up to Applications, open up Corner Rat Software, go down to where it says Practice Offline, so that you can get this set up without having to worry about being in the game and you can take your time. You're going to want to go in to um, your key mapper. Okay, so first off, we're going to just go over here to preferences. Make sure that you have all the preferences that you want. So you have on the right, <clears throat> you see you have best quality, balanced, and then best performance. The best performance is going to turn off all the little bells and whistles of extra little things that you uh, might want or might not want. But it's going to turn them all off so that you have the best operating uh, performance for the game. Okay. Um, over here on the left hand side, you have your, this is for the game, you have connection, which uh, the network route you're going to use uh, best because you also have primary, secondary, etc., etc. But it's best to use the best, which is the one you want. Uh, visible player limit. I have my computer right now set on performance, so I have it down to low. But you have three different things. You have uh, low, medium, and high. And that's going to be the number of players that you can see at any one time. Okay. Um, then you have under video, you have your display, which in this case I have, uh, I'm using... Um, this is saying the HD graphics 630, which um, I'm actually, when I start the game, um, I have it set to my NVIDIA card, so yeah, which has a much better one than the one that's built into the computer. And then we have, of course, um, the, the different resolutions, and I set it on the highest one for me. <clears throat> And, uh, and then we also have the choice of be having the vertical in, uh, syncing on. And uh, I leave that disabled on the, the so that it doesn't cause any problems. Uh, you have under effects. <clears throat> you can see now uh, we can have uh, normal maps. Um, post render filter. I have that. These are all things disabled because I have it set on performance and uh, water shaders, uh, water reflection. However, uh, muzzle flashlights, um, that is very important when you're trying to find, especially since I fly and I'm looking down at the ground, I can't see a lot of stuff going on down there because the people are very, very small. So, but if I can see the muzzle flash lights from tanks or machine guns or rifles, then it gives me an idea where something is down there. Also, uh, combat smoke, um, I, that's, I like to have that on. And then you also have the specular, which would be like, you can leave that on or leave it off. I, for performance, I leave it off. For right now, I just want performance. But I, I keep these two on because uh, they're very important for not able to, to find somebody. And then you have your radio clutter. Again, that's, uh, um, you know, stuff that are near, near you, the density and all that kind of stuff. Again, um, uh, when I'm flying, I have it disabled anyway. And you get shadows. Uh, I have it on low because of the performance. Um, infantry, you've got level of detail, uh, number of corpses, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, it's different things that you can see right here, and the number of corpses that are laying around if there, you know, something's going on. From the air, I don't really care because I'm, I, very often, very rarely do I ever see a corpse from the air. People are too small for that. <clears throat> Under sound, I've got, I'm using my sound card. Uh, ambient noise, I have that disabled. Um, basically in the air, I don't need it. Down on the ground, you're going to hear wind, animal noises, that sort of thing. I have the alerts turned on in case I, you know, something needs to pop up. And then I turn the music off, so I don't need that. <clears throat> and then I have, uh, you know, my font size I don't see very well, so I have to have that on the, the largest one that they have, which is 12. Uh, I have the tulips on, although I generally don't really need it. Uh, been playing the game for almost 20 years, so, um, <laughs> but I got it there, just in case. Um, and then we have the colors for the different uh, individuals. You got friendlies are the generic dark blue. Enemy colors is going to be a red. 
uh, squad color I put as white it doesn't mean it's whatever you prefer uh, mission color I have a very light blue so if you're all the people that are on your mission with you are gonna be light blue and any of my squad mates will be white on that same mission uh, mission leader I've got as a kind of a purple color which sometimes I mistake for an enemy but that's all right it's better to mistake him for an enemy and shoot at him if you have to <laughs> rather than you know, once you figure out oh no wait a minute that's my mission leader you can't hurt him because there's no friendly fire uh, and then new player color is the light green which signifies that they're a, a new to person to the to the game um, then we have here uh, AWS which is um, uh, kind of like an early warning system. Um, they, people call it radar, but it's not really radar. But so if you get no, uh, to notice notification that uh, something's going on, um, you've got kind of like a yellow uh, tint will come over the, the grid or the, what you're looking at on the map, let you know that there's at least an enemy aircraft been detected, not necessarily by radar, but by um, ground troops or... Um, you know the 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 plane watchers whatever and uh, so it, essentially it lets you know that within a 10,000 um, uh, meter grid that there's gonna that there's more than likely an airplane in in that grid uh, and then I leave the opacity all the way up to the maximum uh, so it gets my attention that means it's it's gonna be you can't really see through it very well and this orange color happens to be for <clears throat> when uh, there's high concentration of enemy that will be they will go from a light color to a very dark um, orangish color so very bright um, <clears throat> on the chat um, there's different radios which we're not going to talk about in this game uh, in this video but um, we'll we'll do that later um, <laughs> You have a bad language filter. Um, you can leave it on, leave it off. It's not, totally up to you. Squad invites. Um, uh, I happen to be in a squad, and I'm one of the officers at uh, recruiters. So if I have that on, then people are invited automatically. If they uh, click on it or whatever, they can they can be invited into the squad. Um, and my heads up display and my HUD. <coughs> Um, I've got the HUD sh showing when I spawn in. You can put it on uh, hide the HUD, and then you have to call it up by hitting the letter Y. Um, I just leave it up, and if I want it to go away, I hit the letter Y. Icon mode, which is your uh, uh, control I. Um, you can, uh, I have it set for name and rank. Uh, you can just put it on the type of vehicle, or you can have it as none, but that makes it difficult sometimes because then you, you, if you're not sure who you're, you're looking at, you may end up uh, shooting at, wasting ammo on a friendly, even though you can't hurt them, and also give your position away. So I leave it on name and rank. For then we have death icons. I have that enabled. Um, so if I happen to see an icon down on the ground, it shows a little skull and crossbones, means that somebody died there and uh, can give me a clue as to maybe I need to strafe that uh, bush line or something. Um, then we have uh, when you're pl placing uh, player placed objects and the placement is good or valid, then it, it's going to be green in color before you actually build it. If it's a bad location, in other words, it's on a slope or something that's not allowed, it'll be in a red color. That's, that's, that's the default settings. I just leave it at that. Um, then you have your HUD windows game information readouts orders uh health bar primary ammo secondary ammo chat box i have all that stuff turned on there's also a small mini map which when i'm flying i don't really need i have compasses and all kinds of stuff on my plane i don't really need a mini map um, i can pull up the big map if i want to look at something so i have that disabled just so i have more screen to play with and on the ground again you can do whatever you want plus you can on the mini map when you have it enabled um you can uh, move this slider here as to how much you want it zoomed in a lot or you know all the way down highest to the highest zoom you you have so again I don't use the mini map so um, that's okay but the mini map does come in handy for doing lots of different things so anyway um, also HUD alerts I have it enabled automatic text display I have it set for uh, looks like about um, I don't know eight seconds so that I can read it. I'm a slow reader. <laughs> um, HUD points, waypoints. We have mission waypoints. I have that enabled. Uh, mission waypoints for uh, rally, attack, bomb. I have that enabled. 
Um, and it may be up to you. So you might not want to see these things, but I do. Um, I like being able to see if somebody who's a mission commander for a mission to the same target sets up a, a, a something, then I want to be able to see it. In particular, if they are showing, uh, like rather than using the, the, the normal method, to signify that there's a tank you put a little tank emblem on the on the map that sort of thing but if you know there's something sitting there big and you want to get it hit hard right away you can hit um, a waypoint with, with description of bomb or attack and with a description of what it is you can type it right in there a, a tank or a flak trap or um, say some trenches uh, enemy trenches and you can mark it and then everybody around will see oh it's, that's what's going on or if it's a enemy spawn forward mobile spawn thank you <laughs> um, and then again you have uh, you can make it rare uh, uh, change the different colors I like rally points blue that's easiest because you know that's friendly uh, attack colors red uh, bombing color if it's going to be an orange that's the default settings and I make it as dark or as thick and not seeable, so see throughable as possible, so that, uh, especially from the air, um, if I want to see this thing, I want to see it. I, I don't want to, um, you know, guess where is this thing. So um, I like it. And then anytime you, you play with these things, you can discard, discard your changes, or you can save your changes. In this case, I'm going to save. <clears throat> I only changed one, one or two little things there. Um, then we're going to go over here. Uh, you, well, you also have the key mapper, uh, just so you know. You have infantry, tanks, trucks and haulers, AT guns, uh, AAA guns, fire, fighters and bombers, ships and boats. Uh, anytime you click on the main tab, this is what it is for everything under those tabs. If you want to change something, you can either change it under the main tab, uh, which is you just double click whatever it is you want to do and, um, and say like, okay I want it to uh, go forward by hitting my mouse number two button and then you go down and save um, however I don't want to change that <laughs> I prefer the, the, the normal settings for that um, you could also clear whatever's out of there and just discard the change again if I want or if I want to hit default key map it'll put up whatever the default thing is that I've highlighted there and I'll click it and it'll put whatever the default was which in this case is the same letter however if you want to go in you can go to your different units you have all kinds of infantry all sorts of different things and if you make a change whatever you change here is only going to apply to that individual that type of category um, all the other ones are going to use the, the main the main movements or whatever under this the main tab and you know that's true for the fighters the bombers you can see i've added all kinds of things in with different joysticks and that sort of stuff so let's go and see how we set that up so we're going to go to controllers over here in control controllers if you have your joystick plugged in or i'd like it for myself i have a flight yoke a throttle body and rudder pedals and if i'm having them plugged in and being uh, detected for the very first time or if I'm going to make some changes, whatever, I can hit detect controller and it'll say your controllers have been reread, which you know, they've been reread a million times. If you want to control your mouse, you have your general movement of your character. You can, uh, you know, if you really want it sensitive, you can move this here. And then if you really want to kind of dumb it down a little bit, eh, we'll put it down to less sensitive. I prefer for this part. Uh, to be up in the, you know, to be, to be able to move my character around fairly, fairly rapidly. You know, I don't want him to spin 360 degrees by just breathing on it. But, uh, you know, like that. And then when I'm aiming, which in this case is going to be either the X on the keyboard or my right, my right click of my mouse. And you zoom in. I don't want it to be moving all over the place like, you know, like up in here. Uh, it'd be so sensitive that I couldn't hit anything. So on that... In for general speaking or general purposes I keep it down pretty low so that I move a little tiny bit when I'm aiming and trying to you know, get something okay now um, <clears throat> depending how many types of units now each one of my 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 flight yoke my rudder pedals and my throttle body is considered a different joystick so for example um, let's go to our key mapper and since I'm 99.9% .9 of the time I fly um, they have different settings in here that come up automatically by default. 
if you don't have a joystick, but I do have a joystick plugged in. And so those are not there. And instead, for my pitch, um, I would double click this and pull back and forth on my yoke, uh, which is your pitch is up and down. And, uh, and then for roll, it's going to be my X axis. Again, this would all be blank if you were to first come in here and I just moved my head because I have a track IR unit. And uh, so let me double click that again and keep my head still. And um, this is going to be for the roll, which is my uh, X axis left and right. And then I have yaw, which in this case is going to be my uh, joystick two, which is my rudder pedals, totally separate unit down on the floor. Okay, and then joystick three happens to be my throttle body. So I'm, when I go to my throttle, I move it back and forth. I just detected that. And again, these would all be blank normally. And uh, so what you would see is this when you first come in. If it didn't place anything in those, then you would have to go in and key map it. However, um, I've already done this and I'm not going to do it again. Uh, you can figure that part out, part out on your own. Um, if you want to do, um, let's say, elevator trim or that sort of thing. I, I On my throttle body, I have several different dials and wheels. And I can, uh, so for my flap control, I have um, uh, a, this thumb, thumb wheel that I can, I, I would double click and roll it back and forth. And... One direction it's going to detect it for doing whatever and back the other direction so anyway i'm going to clear the key uh, whoop. So, uh, ch discard the changes that i made because as you can see my uh, flap control and my elevator trim i've already got key mapped and i don't want to mess that up so i just cleared those changes to where i had uh, blanked those out and then anyway, once you have these set, then you can save those changes, and move on. Um, you can also see your default settings. You have, um, um, let's see, aileron trim down here, which is um, uh, a period and a comma. Uh, you can use those two uh, for adjusting the, the, the uh, if your plane isn't flying quite level. It would adjust the balance of the plane. Uh, rudder trim, which is the you know your vertical stabilizer in the back, and if you're playing, if you know, there's a little thing on the box in the upper left-hand corner uh, from your tilde key, and it shows you what's going on with the, your vehicles. And in this case, in an airplane, um, in, if you notice that you're not fly, quite flying straight, you've got a positive or a negative number in the um, rudder type thing um, then you can uh, adjust it by hitting the, your uh, J and L keys to adjust it one way or the other same thing with your prop you've got prop up prop down apostrophe and semicolon um, so all, these are all just you know, default keys let's go back to our controllers so anyway that's the basic thing set up for your key mapper um, your controllers your you know the, mouse, uh, all that kind of stuff. You have views, your general views. Um, I have uh, a track IR unit. So rather than using a mouse, which this would normally be mouse X and mouse Y, um, I have changed it to my track IR. Uh, and you make you have to make sure that your track IR is operating before you start the game. Otherwise it won't read it. So you have to have it going prior to the game start. And uh, anyway, you double click and turn my head and double click and nod my head there's a whole video on how to set that up um number pad look around that's the, that's normal that's the def default settings uh you just push these buttons and wherever button uh, that you're pushing like number nine on the on the pad's going to be on a diagonal to your right add the five in there which five is up but if you have a diagonal and an up you're going to shoot diagonal or obliquely at an angle that uh in that direction and uh so these are just normal look look around uh, show your cursor where it is. Uh, you can left shift and uh, and uh, left alt and hold those two and your your uh, cursor will pop up and then you can grab some of your different boxes on the screen and move them around by left clicking the, your mouse. The key mapper again is the letter P. Your HUD is the letter Y. You can bring it up, put it down. If you need to reset the, the HUD because uh, something's disappeared, a box or whatever, you just hit your... Um, um, 
left control Y together, and uh, that will just reset it back to its original state default setting. So anyway, going through all these different things, you, you can go through these yourself. There's, there's lots and lots of stuff. But <clears throat> let's get back into those controllers. Now, uh, we know my flight yoke is joystick number one, okay? So you also have these um, sliders, which normally it's going to be a straight line with that right dead in the center, which means it's just going to be an even sort of thing. If you want to be able to roll your plane a little bit faster, if that's, or depending on what it is you're trying to control, but if you want something to be faster, you can move it in this direction because that means it's, it's moving up faster when it gets to here and then it's going to slow down once it gets beyond that. Uh, if you want it super fast, you can bring it over here like this and that's instantaneous, but that isn't very good for when you're trying to control an airplane. So let's not do that. Um, I, did, I was just trying out some different settings the other day. I had changes so it's a little softer when, with my rolls. Um, the type of plane I was playing with was at, at that time was something that it's easy to oversteer. So I didn't want to oversteer it that much. I just bring it back down this direction. But the normal is there, and, and in the X direction, you pretty much want to have uh, be able to roll as quickly as you can uh, or uh, within the limits of that airplane. Um, in your Y... Uh, you have the this here now you don't want when you're pulling back in the joystick you don't want to black out uh, then you can uh, soften that so that it's um, as you're pulling on it it's <clears throat> not going to be so intense um, so that you have a little more leeway in, in you know, going down and going up that sort of thing but then if you really want to uh, you pull it beyond uh, this normally when you pull the joystick if you had the, the little indicator it would slide along here once it gets to there it's going to go full power uh, when you get to that point um, um but i and i'm as i'm looking at it now i think i want, want mine to be not so severe when i get it to that maximum so if i Put it right right here i'm going to give this a try i haven't i haven't played with this in a long time but uh that's what i would do for my um, uh, so that I don't black out as much when I'm you know, making tight turns and stuff. Um, <clears throat> also, um, this, if you have a joystick that has rudder control built into the joystick, where it's just a single handle, not rudder pedals like I have on the floor, then this is where you would come into either there or uh, this one here, the uh, uh, rudder, you're going to say RZ axis. However, and, and this would be sliders for different buttons and, and things that are on the joystick. Um, however, in my case, my rudder is joystick two, and it is in the uh, YZ axis. So if I click that, you can see I have dummied down my, my rudder just a little bit, uh, simply because um, um, I generally fly a 110, uh, which has two rudders, and those things are so severe, <laughs> if you crank on them the plane will practically fly sideways and flip and go crashing into the ground if you're fairly low to the ground so um i soften that by pulling this down this way and then therefore it uh, it, it goes but it's not as severe unless i really crank on it okay and then again i'm just trying it out i see uh if i like it uh you know i may go back to my normal setting is right there but uh, uh i'm gonna give this a try for a little bit see how it works um, and then, of course, I have my my throttle, which is the the game. Uh, the game considers my throttle as joystick number three. How do I know that? I go to my key mapper and go to my fighter bombers and my throttle, which also also could be used for tanks, um, trucks, whatever. If if you want, that's totally up to you. But my throttle is set here, and and it says joystick three in the Z axis. Okay. So if I go to the controller and I go to joystick three Z axis, oh, there we go. And so there's my, uh, my throttle <laughs> and, uh, uh, I have it up here. I want it instantaneous. I don't want to monkey around. I want to make sure that that sucker, it, it knows that it's going to be used. So I grabbed it and pulled it from its normal position, which again is right there. And I just shoved it right up there. So it's, um, also, there's a couple of other sliders, which in this case are little wheels, dials. And uh, what I've done, if I go back to the key mapper, and if I go to, well, let's just see how it works on the, the main setting. There, there we go. Um, 
So under my flap control, I have um, incremental flaps. There we go. And there's also a training video that I did years ago on how to set that up. Um, but um, if, as you notice here, I got joystick three, which is my throttle body, and it says RX axis. Okay, and that's for this slider. So if I go to the controller, let me uh, change that. Go to this controller, go to the uh, RX axis. You can see I have it pulled all the way down here in this corner. I want to be able, since this is incremental flaps and I want it to go small increments so I can do you know, a little bit of flap or if I crank it really hard to get a lot of flap, but I want to go very small increments at a time, then I bring this down over here and it's going to go, it's going to barely change as I, as I move the dial. And of course, it, it's going to have uh, down and then back up. So it's going to have a, like a center position because it's it, it's a round dial. So at a center point will be down, flaps down and in the other direction is going to be flaps up uh, or vice versa. <clears throat> Um, also, um, I have uh, elevator trim, and this is in the back. You have a couple different ways that the elevator trim can work, uh, depending on what type of plane you're flying. Uh, sometimes there's a little tab that's on the back of the elevators in the tail of the airplane. Um, when the elevators are going up and down, when you're moving your flight yoke back and forth, um, that makes the, the you know the the back end down go down back end come up which changes the pitch of the plane either down or up right um but sometimes you want to be able to trim it so that it's got like a, a steady climb or something like that then you would use the elevator trim which is here and in this case it's the r y axis on that joystick three so if i go to the joystick three uh r y which is where it says rudder Y. There we go. And um, again, this is the elevator trim. Or, um, yeah, elevator trim, sorry. And um, I want that to also be very small increments until I get to the top end of, of whatever it is that I'm doing. And that way um, I can ju do just one, two, three percent and I can have it be a very gentle climb or I can crank it hard and get all the way up. But the, the more I pull it down here, the smaller the incremental change because you're moving along, uh, you know, down in here, it's going to be just very small. And as you get further along on your dial, it's going to start going in bigger increments. And then when you get past here, it's going to jump from, you know, with barely breathing on it from, you know, say 58 up to uh, almost 100 in, by just a small amount. So this depends on, uh, and I found that um, doing it about, I think it was there, <clears throat> that it's more even consistent as you're going, as you're moving the dial on your trim settings. Uh, okay, so that's the basic, basic things. And when you make your adjustments in the controllers, uh, essentially, that's it. It's saved automatically when you, when you make the adjustment. Sometimes you might have to hit detect again, and it will... Uh, be reread at these settings for these controllers and that sort of stuff. So it doesn't hurt it by detecting it yet again. Um, and if you're having any problems, you want you make sure you go here and detect your all your controllers. So again, uh, in fact, they have room for another joystick, but I'm not sure what that would be for. <laughs> I've got I've got three, and that seems to be enough for me. And so anyway, and then, oh yeah, and then your mouse control, I think I already said before, which I know I did, uh, this would be moving your characters, infantry, or um, in, might have it set up for uh, your turret for a tail gunner, or um, aiming for um, an anti-tank gun or a, or a tank, uh, so you have your major, you know, uh, movements, and then you have your uh, fi finite small movements so that you can you know, get the, get that you know more accurate shot, particularly if it's over a long distance. So anyway, that's pretty much it. Um, if there's any other questions about that sort of stuff, we always have help help um, uh, sections that you can go to, and uh, um, and then of course these training videos and that sort of thing. And, and uh, thank you for watching this tutorial on how to set your controllers for World War II Online.